All right, so let's open a picture. Uh, I think I already did that letter P uh, to put it on. And let's pick a texture to use. I'll just open a random texture here. Hit open image, because it was a raw file. And I'll use the move tool and I'll simply drag this from within this document over to the other one. It's not quite big enough. I don't mind scaling textures because it's okay if they get a little soft, it still looks fine. As long as I'm not scaling them radically, like to eight times as big as their original. So I'll type Command T for transform and grab the corner. Remember I hold shift to maintain the proportions. So I could scale this up. There is another trick when you're transforming. If you hold down shift, you'll get the proportions, but watch what happens if I hold down option, alt and windows. I'm grabbing the upper right corner and you see how it, right now I don't have option held down. Uh, it just pulls that corner up, but if I hold option, it pulls the opposite corner an equal amount. Okay? So therefore I can easily get this scaled up to where I need it. So if you hold down the option key, that's alt and windows, and you grab one corner, it's going to pull the opposite corner an equal amount so that it kind of keeps what you have centered in your document then. Then I'm going to change the blending mode. The blending mode is found at the top of the layers panel. It's usually set to normal. And there's a whole grouping in here that usually works pretty nicely with textures. And that's the grouping that begins with a choice called overlay. So I'm going to choose overlay and let's see what happens. That's going to control how the layer I'm currently working on interacts with what's underneath it. So with overlay chosen, I'll then toggle the layer to turn it off and on. And can you see that the layer now has a hint of texture? I'll zoom up, make it a little um, easier for you guys to see. But before, after, we're getting texture. Wasn't that easy? Yeah. Just pop it on top, change the blending mode overlay. Now the only limitation with that that you're going to really run into is this will work best with textures that are a medium brightness. If your textures are overly bright or overly dark, it's going to make your picture overly bright or overly dark. If your texture is a medium brightness, near 50% gray, it won't change the brightness. So you can always adjust your texture though. You know, just adjust your texture. In fact, here, I'll actually use levels. Don't tell anybody else I did it. <laughs> but when you go in here, with a texture, oftentimes you'll see one hump. If it's a pretty consistent texture, it doesn't vary a lot in brightness. And just move the middle slider until it's in the middle of the hump. In levels, the middle slider determines what is 50% gray. I'm saying make the majority of this picture 50% in brightness. So if you do that, with even a dark texture or a bright texture, it will make it a medium brightness. Don't tell me by use levels there. <laughs> so there we go. Now, overlay is not the only choice we have available. We can use any of the choices that are in this general section. What really happens with all of these choices in here is wherever 50% gray shows up, the picture goes away. I should say the texture goes away. And instead, you see the picture that's underneath. Wherever the texture is brighter than 50% gray, it's going to brighten the image that's underneath. Wherever the texture is darker than 50% gray, it's going to darken the picture that's underneath. And that's why it's important to have a texture that's near 50% gray. And if it's not, to adjust it. So that's true with most of the rest of these too. So I can switch from overlay mode to soft light mode. And you see it's slightly different end result. Or to hard light mode, which will usually be more radic radical in how much it applies it. Vivid light, each one of these will give me a slightly different looking end result. Linear light's looking pretty cool, if you really like texture. Pin light in this particular case isn't doing it, and hard mix is a bit much, okay? But, I think it was linear light, that's a crazy amount of texture. Let's zoom out and see that. So oftentimes I'll end up applying texture, but the thing is I don't like applying it evenly across the entire picture. Oftentimes there's a subject matter in there, and if it's a person or something, having this texture on their face and stuff might not look great, but you guys know how to fix that already. You just add a layer mask, and with layer mask active, you can paint with black to get it off of anything. So I might come in here and use my 
quick selection tool. I'll turn off the texture to begin with just so it has a simplified image to look at. And then I might come in here and just say, why don't you try to select the letter P. Should have done that before I added the mask, but now that I do have the mask and I have that area selected, if the mask is active, all I got to do is tell it to fill the mask. And one of the things I can tell it to fill with is black. So now I only have texture on the outer part. I could duplicate the texture, use a different blending mode on the inner part, maybe one that's mellower, that kind of stuff. So remember, if you purchase the class, you get this folder full of textures to go along with the class. So you don't have to be always searching them out because sometimes it's just hard to think about uh, when you're out there.